Hey guys, so today I'm going to talk a little bit about focal length. So I'm Daniel Norton, photographer here in New York. I make videos like this that are kind of technical. I make you know, videos about gear and philosophy and stuff like that. If you guys are interested in photography, uh, go ahead and subscribe. So this is actually a response to the fact that I get about 20 messages a week, at least, uh, asking very specifically what lens somebody should use for something. And I get that when you are starting, especially, um, you know, maybe you're not so familiar with lenses. So you're thinking, well, I don't know what lens I should buy or what lens I should bring on this project or what it should be. So you reach out to me and, uh, you know, <laughs> honestly, it, it really varies. I mean, it's hard for me to say because you're describing something to me, whatever. It, it's, a, it's a hard question. I mean, I'll usually give a roundabout answer of, of what I think might be work. But, uh, you know, after getting three of those messages yesterday, I just, I can't keep answering them. So I'm going to make this video and I'm going to send people to this if they send me this question because this is just good knowledge to have anyways. So I spent all of five minutes Googling and I found a few resources that we'll be able to use to figure out kind of what lens will work for you. So um, I'm going to come over here and uh, let's see, I'm going to share my screen with you guys and we will take a look. Okay, so. This site, I'm going to put links to this. This is a, a, by Nikon. It's on Nikon's site, Nikon's Imaging. You can see right there. Um, this is kind of a neat thing. Um, you can actually plug in, I believe, your exact camera or whatever. I never really do that. But you put in your uh, FX, which would be full frame, DX, which is the crop, and then CX is, I guess, the little baby one. Um, and then you've got your focal lengths. And what they do is they have this sample image here. So you can say, like, okay, this is shot with a 14 millimeter. But what would happen if I used a 50 millimeter? And you can drag this over. Oops, went too far to 50 and it will show you basically what the 50 millimeter will give you as far as you know roughly a field of view still showing you that 14 uh, millimeter wide shot so you guys you know so you can remember where you're at right so like if you really like what would a 500 millimeter lens do for me you know you can zoom super right with 500 millimeters you know and this will give you a general idea you know i think most people have a general idea of what like a, a lighthouse looks like and size wise or whatever um so this gives you an idea i think it's visual and it's really nice for that reason um i'm not sure it gives you your angle of view here which is super useful um so that's really cool um this is very useful just to kind of get an idea if you're thinking about getting different lenses or what lens might be good for whatever or what it could possibly do um so i think this is super useful so you know, if you're ever kind of like trying to envision what a lens does, this is a great uh, thing to come check out. Again, it's on the Nikon site. There might be other of these around, but this is the one. This has been around for a while, I guess. Um, I remember seeing it a while back. It actually was just mentioned in a conversation not that long ago. So I was like, oh, that's really interesting. Um, the other thing, which is also, by the way, is uh, by... Uh, oh, we're going to go that in a second. Uh, this is actually on the uh, Nikonians, which is like a... a user group for people that use Nikon. So two Nikon things, interesting enough. Um, this lists a bunch of lenses um, here, and it lists the focal lengths, rather, and it lists uh, right their field of view horizontal, which would be, you know, basically your, your horizontal of the uh, of the, the sensor. So if you shoot in full frame, it'd be 24 by 36, right? So uh, the 36 end, right? Um, and then the vertical... Um, you know, well, I should say the 24 end, and then the vertical would be the, the, the longer end. So um, what this basically means for us is that uh, you can get a general idea of the field of view, and then you might be thinking, well, field of view, like, what, what does that even mean? What can that do for me? So yeah, we can go into trigonometry and figure all this other stuff out, but if you don't want to do all that yourself, this is actually, I found this site really quickly by just doing a quick look. This actually explains a lot of how this stuff works, which is really neat. Um, if you're into math or whatever, but if you don't care about that, <laughs> this section right here is what you're going to want to look at, right? So we've got our sensor width, we have our distance, and we have our focal length. And you, if you look at your formula up here, the distance to field, right, so the distance, um, and the uh, field dimension, right, they need to be in the same uh, thing. So it could be inches, it could be feet, it could be miles, right? It's all going to matter, right? So... If, what you've got here is a uh, sensor width, so that'd be the, the skinny part of the lens, or, uh, the skinny part, of the, skinny part of your sensor is 24. And, you know, if you wanted to, I mean, obviously the word, the, the name's not going to change, but if you could change that to 30, 35 or 36 or whatever um, to equal the, the vertical, if you want, which we'll do in a second. And then you've got your distance and then you've got your vocal length. So for instance, if we, if we wanted to say, okay, let's say that I'm shooting, you know, uh, horizontally and I'm going to shoot a group of people, and the tallest person in my group um, is, 
you know, I don't know, let's say they're, they're six feet tall. So I know that I want my, my, my width to be uh, six, right? Uh, if I, if my, I'm using distance, if I'm using this for my thing. So if I know I, I want that to be six and let's say I know I, my widest lens, like I know I want to shoot this to the wide lens is the 35. So I can plug in the 35. I can plug in the, this is already there, 24. I can then, now I'm going to just guesstimate, right? I'm going to say, okay, well, I need to figure out with 35 millimeter, I need the, the field width to be at least six. So I'm just going to, I'm going to say, what, what would happen if I stood 10 feet away? That seems like a reasonable uh, way to stand. And actually, 10 feet is like a little, almost seven feet. So that's probably perfect. So standing approximately 10 feet away with a 35 millimeter lens, shooting horizontally, you're, you're up down, will be almost seven feet. I mean, if you want to be exactly at the top of people's heads, you'd get a little closer, you know. But figure that uh, there's nine feet, you know, that's right at the top of people's heads. So figure you want between nine and 10 feet. If you only have six feet, let's say, uh, then let me plug that in. Then you're not going to have enough space, right? So you're going to be like, well, I only have six feet, but I have to shoot the, these group people. I have to shoot somebody head to toe, and they're six feet tall. So uh, you know, maybe now I need, now let's say I can change my lens. Let's say what, what lens should I use for that? Let's try a twenty-four. Oh, that's exactly six. Oh, actually, that works out perfectly because if, if these two match, that number is the same, I believe. Uh, I'm not a math genius, but I think that's how it works out. So. 24 millimeter lens will get you barely the six feet. So if you had something like a 21, um, that's probably better for you to give you a little extra space. So now that same, you know, shot you can do um, with a wider lens in less space. That's basically how that works. So if you're trying to figure out, you know, what lens covers certain things, like let's say, let's do something a little, a little different. Let's say, for instance, that we have a, um, Let's say we're going to photograph a piece of art, but it's at like a, a gallery and we can't get uh, too close to it, but we want to fill the whole frame. So let's say, for instance, the gallery tells us that we have to stand 10 feet away from this art and the art is, let's say, 20 inches. Well, say we'll do the wide end is uh, 16 by 20. So you want to get at least 16, right? So uh, we know we have to stand 10 feet away and we want to fill it with as much as possible, right? So... Um, we all, the ten, now 10 feet, of course, is not 10 there because we're, we're doing inches. So 10 feet is 120 inches, right? So 120 inches away, uh, we want our, this number here, our, our field width, we want this to be about a little over 16, basically. So let's just compute with the 21. Clearly, it's really a lot. So let's say, what if we use our 100 millimeter lens? Okay, getting closer. Let's say 135. Okay. Let's say our 200, well, I'm assuming we have like a 70 to 200 zoom. Okay, so, you know, 135 was was too wide, 200's too, too narrow. Um, you know, it looks like about 150 is good. So if you got a, you know, a lens that's around 150, that should cover you, right? Now we can also double check because we know uh, the art is 16 by 20, right? So we want to make sure on the long end that we have enough, we can just switch this to 35, right? That's 28, plenty, right? So you could have done it either way. So so basically, this is going to allow me to set up, uh, you know, I'm going to go back here. This allows me to set up my my lens choice before I even get there. I know that at 10 feet away, I'm going to want a lens of at least 150 millimeters to be able to get a tight, the tightest possible shot on that 16 by 20 in this situation, right? And get as much coverage as possible. Now, this one at the bottom, you can also... Um, figure it like this, like, let's say, for instance, the same thing, you know, that you have a 16 by 20 that you need to photograph. So let's, let's say the width is, uh, we're going to, we're doing the narrow end. So we'll do 16, right? So, um, and let's say, you know, that you have to work with a 50 millimeter lens. If you have this information, then we know our distance, right? Uh, assuming you can focus that close to get 16 inches. Uh, you probably want a little more than 16. So let's say 17, cause you don't want to be right up against it. Um, so let's say to get a 17 inch width, right? Uh, with our 50 millimeter lens, we're going to need to be about, just just, just about three feet away, basically, th just shy of 36 inches. So this can help you set things up. If, say that you're setting up a copy stand and you don't have, you know, you wanna make sure that uh, you, you're building it out the right way or you're gonna set something up and you wanna prep stuff before it's there. You can figure out what, the, what it is without even looking through the camera by looking at this. So if you're curious as to, let's do something really crazy. Let's say for instance, we're gonna shoot, um, uh, we want to shoot uh, some some wildlife, right? So we're going to shoot uh, some some birds. And let's say the the bird is like a big bird, it's like a pelican or something. Um, let's say that the the bird itself is is uh, three feet, 
you know, we're going to say we want a three foot wide uh, or tall uh, field, right? So we want to, uh, but the, the, how far away do we need to be to get that, right? Right, that's only like six feet with a 50, right? So that's actually, oh man, we can't get that close to it. That's like super close. Oh, but I have my 200. So I throw my 200 on there and now I'm 25 feet away getting that same field, right? So this tells me that if, if the birds are skittish or whatever, that I'm going to uh, want to use a longer lens. Now this is probably should be intuitive after a while the more you work, but if there's things that you're you're getting used to or you're new to lensing and you're not sure, this will give you a rough idea. So this is actually more scientific, so you can actually really figure things out. Like I'm going into a situation, I know I need this, so can I do it? Um, it does factor in here that it doesn't uh, do macro stuff and that it's not exactly perfect, blah, blah, but um, you know, this will get you very, very close. And by the way, just to see if you want to test your math down here, you can actually, just for fun, you can actually go to, uh, to this guy over here and let's say we'll look at like, I don't know, this 75 millimeter focal length, uh, you know, 75 millimeters, right? So let's, put, let's put, we can go down here and you can actually put in your millimeter, your, uh, sorry, the sensor width is there. You put your millimeters here for your lens and it'll give you the degrees, 18.18. And when we come back here, we can see that uh, 75 millimeters, you know, 18.2 is what they got listed there. So it's basically, it matches. So the math is all good. Uh, you know, that's really where you're at, right? You can actually use this, by the way, too. Let's say that you don't have any of this information and somebody just tells you, let's say you don't know the focal length of a lens, but they, you know the angle of view. Let's say the angle, oh, they said the angle of view is 70, 78 degrees. Well, we can just keep plugging numbers in here, you know, until we get close well, it's 90. Okay, so let's say you know, 14. You see what I'm doing here? I'm just changing it until I get close to 78. Um, oh, it went the wrong way. Yeah, so, you know, really, maybe it's like 15 millimeters. So if you're kind of figuring that out, right? Uh, just is more fun. I think I don't know how to use that practically in a job. But this section up here can be super useful, guys. If you're like, again, that, those type of situations happen. Somebody says, hey, can you build out a studio for, for us? We want to do... The place settings, let's say it's a company, right? So you're going to come in and set up a place settings, you know, overhead camera. Well, it's not easy to always get up and look through the camera. You'll know, right? If the place setting is, uh, let's say, three feet wide, right? You can tell with your, let's say, again, we're going to say we're using a 50 millimeter lens for just for simplicity's sake. You know that um, if you need it to be three feet wide, Right, you can figure out your distance here. You can just kind of plug some numbers in until you get until you get three feet, right? So five, six. So that's not quite enough. Seven. Yeah, so you're gonna to want to be about seven feet up from the from the spot. That's you know, that's at the at this end. Then you can check your other end as well. Um, depending on the dimensions, I probably would do it both ways to be safe. So that's like uh you would then uh you know switch these around and make sure you got enough width the other way too. Easy as that. So hopefully that makes sense and I will uh, start referring people. So if you send me, if you're, if you're here because I sent you a link because you asked me a question about what lens you need, then take your time to look at this because it's super, super useful. Um, you can get a general idea of it. Like I said, this is actually great if you need to figure out exactly what lens you need for a project. Um, this is just cool so you know the fields of view. Just give you a general idea, I suppose. Um, not as useful, but I, I actually looked this up because I was wanted to make sure the other math was right because I didn't want to come on here and say the math was right without testing it. Um, and then this one is really great, I think, if you're trying to um, just get an idea. Like if you're like, yeah, I go to beaches like this all the time and this is, and shoot, let me see. Uh, oh, that's kind of the shot that I like. Oh, that's about 120 millimeters. So now I know, right, that I, that I uh, that's the lens. And again, in this case, you can actually, I guess you do this. And it switches to DX. I'm not sure exactly how that works. I guess if you select a certain... Oh, you can select the lens. I see how that happens. Okay. That's if you have a specific Nikon thing. Whatever. I mean, if you don't, you can still use this part of it. You know, and you've got... And I believe that this field of view is based on the... Uh, right now, we're based on DX, I guess. Does that make sense? Now it's the same. Let's see. FX. Oh, no, it changes. Okay, I see how that worked. Oh, that's cool. Okay. So there you go. Right? Um, it does actually switch for you. So you can actually use it for, for DX as well if you use a smaller. Uh, I don't know the exact dimensions of CX. I think it's smaller than DX, but not like Micro Four Thirds. So if you're using Micro Four Thirds, that's not going to be as useful to you. 
Um, but as long as you know the size of your, uh, your sensor, because again, this is what you need to know. So look in your camera specs and get your sensor width and length, right? And then you'll know, and also the focal length of your camera, right? And, or lens, I should say, and that, then you can do all this math here. So it's super simple, guys. Uh, you know, it, it doesn't, it's funny, I say this a lot when I'm talking to people, uh, cause they're like, oh, you know, uh, math. math. Yeah. I mean, photography is math. I mean, it's basically a science when you start looking at these things and, and it, that you're, you shouldn't be expected to know everything, but what you need to know is how to figure the things out when somebody asks you. So when you're assigned or asked to do a project and you're trying to figure out your gear, you want to be able to figure it out. And this is one way to do it. It's just simply taking the information that you have and then plugging it in and it will give you the information that you need. So there you go. What lens do you need? It depends on what you're doing, right? So uh, go ahead and subscribe if you haven't already and ring the bell to get the notifications, guys. And I'll see you tomorrow.